Hi everyone and welcome to it. This is your girl Lex Lafoy. I am so happy to be back uh, coming to you live from the Deeply Rooted Studios right here in Morningside. Now for those of you that know July is a super special month for Durban as a city for film uh, globally as we celebrate the 45th Durban International Film Festival renowned as the forefront, the leading film festival on the entire continent of Africa. And today I am so thrilled, I'm really happy to be sitting with the festival manager and head of programs, Andrea Voges. Did I say it right? Voges. Voges. Yes. Okay. We are sitting with Andrea Voges, the festival manager and head of program of the 45th annual Durban International Film Festival. Welcome, Andrea. How are you? I'm good. Good. Uh, we're a week away or just under, actually. So uh, we are busy with our final preparations. So quite busy. But I think everything uh, is going well. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to what I think promises to be a successful edition. Amazing. Okay. So in the interview today, uh, we know that you are here in a professional capacity, but we'd also like to start at the beginning just to get to know you, Andrea, as a person a little bit more. Uh, can you please tell us where did you grow up? Um, so I was born and raised in Durban. Okay. Um, I Not one particular area. We moved around a lot, but um, I was born in Sydenham. Uh, we moved to around so I lived in the bluff uh, primarily uh, Westville Musgrave uh, yeah my parents kept us on the move um, as I suppose they try to improve their lives and they mm. try to get to a better area or a better school or mm. um, so I think that's why there was a lot of moving around uh, and I'm grateful to them yeah amazing okay and I see that you have a bachelor of arts degree mm -hmm. um, what were your majors and where did you obtain your degree from okay yeah. so uh, yeah I've got a BA and my majors are communications and psychology okay. uh, I got it through UNISA uh, so when I was 18 I went straight into a very serious job so I've been working full-time I don't think I've ever not worked. <laughs> uh, so when I was 18, I started working and I got my degree uh, part-time. So in the evenings, on the weekends, it took a lot longer than it was supposed to just because of all of the different positions I've held. They're not the kind of uh, jobs that you knock off at five. Mm. Uh, so mm. the degree took a long time, but uh, I'm happy that I have it now. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, you have achieved phenomenal amounts of success um, having been the festival manager for DIFF once before in 2023. You've also worked with the Joburg Film Festival and the Red Sea International Festival. Mm -hmm. You've played a, a major role in the PESP um, project as well as the Realness Institute, Uruku Media and so many others. Yeah. Um, sure. What has the journey been like? <laughs> um, I've been very fortunate, very blessed uh, yeah. to have the opportunities that I've been given. Um, it's a, yeah, the journey's been long, mm -hmm. uh, been hard and challenging at times. We work in an industry where, um, a lot of it is funding based, mm -hmm. so it's not for profit. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you're working a lot of the time with not enough resources, um, so it's been a long, hard journey, but extremely rewarding. And I think it's because of those kind of that adversity, it makes you stronger. Yeah. And if you work with it and cooperate with it, I think it'll get you far. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And your career to date, how many years is it in the making? So that people know, you know, for example, landing a position like manager of a festival doesn't happen overnight. overnight. No. Yeah. Uh, 18 years. Sure. So, yeah, 18 okay. years. My first job, I was an administrator when I was 18 for two and a half years uh, for a music distribution company, an international music distribution oh, company wow. up in Kloof. Okay. And that's where I started uh, and, um, yeah, I am where I am now 18 years later. Amazing. Okay. That's a long journey. So <laughs> for you youngins out there thinking success happens overnight, it does not. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, as, as a young person, a young woman of color, what have some of the challenges been, mm -hmm. um, reaching this point in your career? Mm -hmm. Um, some of the challenges, I think, 
um, there's different kinds. Obviously, mm-hmm. in each organization, each organization has strengths and weaknesses. Um, I think what comes top of mind, if you, I mean, I don't want to, every organization, like I said, uh, pros and cons and they, the normal kind of issues that you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the challenges now I do think are, uh, if I'm being to be, if I'm speaking frankly, uh, mm-hmm. that I am a female, mm-hmm. I look uh, a lot younger than I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am a person of color. Um, and I think some people are really warm and welcoming and they make uh, the kind of efforts to include you, yeah. um, truly include you. And then it's other times it's a tick box exercise. Mm. Um, so a lot of the time I do travel internationally and sometimes a lot of the time I am the only person of color in the room. Mm. Um, but I'm super grateful for that and I hope to open doors for uh, people of color, especially women, especially yeah. Africans, um, yeah, I think that's. I think my challenges are not like super uh, different to anyone else's. Yeah. Uh, but they are there, and I think it should be um, recognized so that it can be addressed. Definitely. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Now, um, tell me, was there ever a desire for you to create film, or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or right from the get go, you know? Um, did you see your strengths in admin and, and business admin in the film industry and, and, you know, you went for it? No. Yeah. I've never had uh, the passion, interest, inkling <laughs> to create any content. Um, I am very, very passionate about what I do. So yeah. over my career, it's very much supporting the artist, you know, kind of once they've completed their work to yeah. treat their work with respect. If we're projecting your film or we have your premiere, make sure that it's done properly. Mm. Make sure we try and get you as much mileage as possible. I've worked in other capacities, as you've noted, uh, the National Arts Council for the PESP. Mm. So that, that again is getting uh, artists money to get them through the, the pandemic. Mm. Um, I worked on another project with the National Film and Video Foundation, the NFEF. It was a special project between South Africa and the UK, and it was basically an exchange between our two nations to strengthen our relationship. Mm. But I was on the South African side, and we supported all kinds of artists, not just film, uh, poetry, visual, um, singers, uh, getting them, kind of matchmaking them with the um, an English uh, person or a person from the UK uh, to work on a project. And so we took South African culture there, they mm-hmm. took their South, uh, their um, UK culture here, yeah. uh, but to do it together so that there's also skills transfer and so on. So that's just another example. Um, throughout my, ca- my career, it's very much about supporting the artist. Mm. I have no interest in being one. <laughs> um, and I think that's a good thing. I think yes. that curators need to be separate. Um, mm. And I think it helps arguably... Um, to kind of remain objective or neutral um, mm. and not be a filmmaker, but you're curating, then maybe you're curating your own stuff mm. or your friend's stuff. Mm. Um, so long story short, sorry, uh, no interest in creating content. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. that. I really do because, I mean, nowadays, especially with social media, it's easy for anyone to, um, you know, fall into the category of celebrity mm-hmm. um, and to blur the lines really yeah. between someone being of service and someone uh, being served, you yes. know. So I commend you for standing firm uh, in your role, serving the arts, serving artists, serving filmmakers. That's that's phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Now, coming back to Diff. Yes. What is it like managing an international film festival uh, of this magnitude, you know, Diff is massive. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's a lot of responsibility. Um, Sure. Uh, Someone in my position at Diff is kind of responsible for everything from um, budgets, helping Mm -hmm. to raise funds, contracting, payments, Mm. uh, curating or overseeing the programming, uh, maintaining relationships. I think that's, that's, uh, that's where really um, can get a lot is is the dynamics and managing the relationships from government entities Mm. uh, to sales agents, distributors, filmmakers themselves, Mm. service providers, which we don't think of as service providers, they're partners like venues Mm. with Suncoast, New Metro Pavilion, um, embassies, I've got to deal with a lot of embassies, consulate mm. generals, 
Um, it just goes on and on and on because the film festival isn't simply just uh, picking some films and showing them. Mm. Um, the program is very, it's not Hollywood, so it's independent uh, art house cinema. And a lot of the time um, it means something, that film means something mm. uh, more than just entertainment. Mm. Um, and with that, um, you know, you've got to engage embassies and and, and social discussion and and so on and so forth. So it's a it's a cultural dis- diplomacy also. Mm. Uh, when I'm traveling, I represent DIF, but I also represent South Africa mm. or Africa. Um, so the question, uh, what's the responsibility? It's a lot. It yeah. goes everything from finance to programming to stakeholder relations, and there's a lot of stakeholders. Uh, <laughs> and to try and balance uh, everybody's kind of uh, interests mm. in a way that serves or maximizes the value of DIF uh, for everyone concerned, but also to be a person of integrity and to be objective and neutral. So there is a big responsibility, um, but I'm grateful for the the, the opportunity. And I can tell you from last year to this year on a personal note, I can see the way I've grown. (laughs) I don't get (laughs) upset so often uh, or so quickly. I've calmed down. Um, So I'm grateful for the, the opportunity. Yeah. Okay, and time-wise, um, what time frame, how many months does it take to prepare for such a, a huge film festival? At a minimum, one year, one full year, okay. and that's working flat out. Okay. Um, if you're in a position where you have resources kind of um, secured hmm. for multi, like a multi-year contract, mm. um, you should be planning uh more than a year in advance um you might find this funny but diff is starting next week this year's diff 2024 i'm already very much working on 2025 i'm already there venues have been booked contracts have been drafted um so minimum a year ideally more a, a year and a half two years okay yeah okay now for people who don't know what the cca that's the center for creative arts um work model is like um i know that every year they also hire new interns Mm -hmm. that work on particular festivals Mm -hmm. now having worked with interns we know that uh it's not always easy (laughs) so as as the diff uh festival manager what Mm -hmm. is that experience like um working with interns i mean because you know it obviously involves a lot of development patience Mm -hmm. skills transference what is that experience like for you um Firstly, I'm very, very grateful to the interns because a lot of them, I mean, it's an internship, so they're not Mm. being remunerated. Um, It's like the basic kind of internship um, bracket that you're earning. Um, And if we get a really good crop, which I think we have this year, Mm. um, they show a work ethic that says I'll go beyond Mm. uh, more than just... It's a, just a job. It's transactional. Um, so if I'm working with the interns that are like that and that will go above and beyond, then I, so they're investing in the project mm. and then I will go above and beyond and invest in them. Mm. Uh, hey, you don't know how to do this with the formula on Excel. Let me show you. Yeah. You know, uh, mm-hmm. so I think it's, it is a, it's, a, it's, an, it's an exchange. Um, the film festival definitely could not operate without the interns, so we really mm. do need them. Um, I am really glad and pleased and it, it really... It makes me really happy when I see the developments of someone. Yeah. Um, but that, I think, it just requires interns that are really interested and serious. Mm. Um, yeah. Then I think it works out quite well. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. So now my final question, really. Um, for other young women, women of color, mm-hmm. colored women, mixed race women, South African women. Um, what is your message of encouragement to other young women of color out there who are watching you, who have seen your multiple successes, mm-hmm. um, the glass ceilings you have broken and continue to break? Mm-hmm. Um, what is your advice or encouragement for them out there? Um, yeah. I think it's very much uh, linked to um, what I said about the interns. I think it's just having a strong work work ethic. I think we are in a generation, the current generation or the young people of today, because they've got social media Mm -hmm. uh, and the culture is very much uh, quick, fast. Yeah. And they want the success fast. Uh, So I think 
the advice to women of color, uh, South Africans, this kind of advice that I would give anybody, mm. which is that as as we started off, nothing comes easy. Mm. Uh, nothing of real value is cheap. You've got to put in the hours, you've, which are, yeah, long hours, long years. Yeah. Um, don't just do, be adventurous. Don't just do your piece of work. I remember when I was young, uh, I would be given a small piece of work. This was my area. And as soon as I was finished, I would go around the building saying, can I help you with your work? Mm. And a lot of, sometimes you get people that like, they finish their work and they're like, I've done my job and they're yeah. just sitting back on their phones. Uh, but what that means is that at the end of, of a year, for example, you've worked a bit in marketing, you've worked a bit in finance, you've mm. worked a bit in programming. So then after a couple of years, you actually know all the aspects of an organization. Yeah. And I think that's incredibly uh, useful. So I think work ethic, um, be adventurous, um, go above and beyond, but not just adventurous at work, but I think in your worldview. Yeah. Try different things, mix with different people. Um, yeah, just try and think out of the box. Try and challenge the way you're living, why you live this way or why you make the choices you do and be independent, uh, an yeah. independent thinker. Okay. Um, but it really, in my, my opinion, I think it just comes down to hard work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you heard it yourself. Uh, yeah, some hard work, stretch yourself, <laughs> go beyond your known circle, yeah. do the things. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's beautiful, Andrea. I, yeah. I just want to thank you for making time. Uh, we know that your schedule is hectic yeah. leading up <laughs> to, to DIFF, uh, starting on the 18th and running until the 28th yes. of July. Yeah. Um, is there any information you'd like to share? Oh, wait, wait. Is there a favorite, may I ask? Do you have a uh, favorite? Film? <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> or something that stands out for you that you would recommend the viewer check out? It's like asking to choose between your children. There's so <laughs> many, so many great films. Yeah. My gosh. Um, I couldn't pick one, to be honest. Um I'm just going to say there's some Indian films, uh, South Korean films. Yeah. I like Asian cinema in general. Okay. The films are incredibly strong. Yeah. Uh, so see those. Um, they're called A Normal Family. Um, Sleep is a horror. It's a fun horror. I'm not even a horror person, but the <laughs> film is in the festival because it was so good. Yeah. Um, gosh, there's so many films. I think what I do want to highlight is a lot of people pay attention to the features mm. and the documentaries, but I would really encourage people to go out and watch the short packages. So it's like, okay. I don't know, 60 minutes, 70 minutes of four or five films. So they're really quick, but they roll one after the other. It's considered one screening. Okay. But the short films are really strong and the student films are really strong. Okay. Uh, we've got students from UKZN after um, the animation school, like lots of South African students, but there's also student films from New York University, Seoul University sure. in Korea. So uh, the standard is high uh, and I would, I think the suggestion is try something that you wouldn't normally try. Yeah. Yeah. And I would, I'd really want to push the shorts and the student forms. Okay. Yeah. You heard it yourself. Uh, please do check out a diff taking place this July from the 18th to the 28th of July. Yeah. 2024. And do you have any closing words before we go? Closing words. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. For, for the very kind uh, um, invitation for making the time and for showing interest in diff and for your support of the arts. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Thank you. From me, Lex Lafoy, we've been here with Andrea Voges. Did I get it right? You did. You did. <laughs> Thank you. We've been here with the DIFF uh, Festival Manager and Head of Programming, Andrea Voges. Uh, you can find out more about the festival online. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, from here, from Deeply Rooted, much love, stay blessed. Bye. <laughs>